brief message from your friendly neighborhood editing Jordan. We tend to try to keep things pretty PG-13 around here, but this is an improv podcast. So who knows what we're going to say. Sometimes we throw in some swearing, some sexual content, and some violence. So as a general warning, viewer discretion is advised. Also to be noted, the opinions stated about a certain tabletop role-playing game are just that, our opinions. We love the game and we like talking about it. So any criticisms are really just all in good fun. That being said, wizards, please hire us. All right, with that out of the way, let's get on with the show. <gasps> hey baby, I hear the fish calling, the salad and scrambled eggs. Never do that Why? again. Hey. No. I don't like Seinfeld. No. <laughs> oh my gosh, that just made me think of something. What? I at work today. This is actually real too. This isn't something I made up for the opening. Mm -hmm. Today, I was just thinking about that one time that we were at the Willis house and we were watching Seinfeld in Spanish uh, in the background <laughs> while we were playing board games. But then I thought about how much funnier it would be if you watched Big Bang Theory in Spanish without subtitles because you would just be randomly bombarded with a bazinga <laughs> in the middle of Spanish. <laughs> And I couldn't keep my composure. I was I was laughing in my cubicle at the thought of this. I haven't <laughs> even watched that. it. I haven't even seen it, like to see if it would if it would be like that. So you understand now when I was talking about the mafiosos that are all like <laughs> yes. Johnny wouldn't get it. Yes, I understand. Johnny wouldn't take it, and I was <laughs> crying at work because of imagining Italian gangsters really loving Junie B. Jones. <laughs> It was too funny. <laughs> Sometimes in an adult life, you just need to think about two things that don't make sense and just make them click, make them click. And it's funny. Oh, yeah. Makes me think a lot of those, that Key and Peele sketch um, of the two guys that, uh, what, 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 you know what I mean? Um, they're in front of a building. I can't, I, I can't remember if they're valet. I think they're valet. Or they might just be like the ticket people at cinemas. Um, but they just talk about movies in a really funny way the whole time. Mm -hmm. It's like that, you know, but it's, it's mafia gangsters liking Junie B. Jones. As they should. Or it's Spanish Big Bang Theory. Bazinga. That wasn't in Spanish. It's not supposed to be in Spanish. That's the funny part. <laughs> really? You like yes. that more than than like uh, Spanish, 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 but single. Like <laughs> I, I imagine given what is, it, is it Jim Parsons? Yes. I imagine his voice is pretty like him. Mm -hmm. I imagine like a completely different voice to fill in for the <laughs> Spanish dub. For me, it, it's funny if it's everything like that, and then it just cuts back to the regular English audio of him. It's saying just Bazinga. Jim Parsons saying "bazinga." Yeah. Oh uh, no, I, I like I like um, Spanish Fabio saying "bazinga." <laughs> Bazinga, like. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Nat One Podcast, aka Nope, because nope, you're not gonna want to hear what we're about to have to say. I'm producing. I'm Levi. And I'm Jordan. I'm gonna have to look this up now to see. <laughs> do it after the show. I will do it after the show. <laughs> Man, it had such a good opening to it. It's such a shame. Give me something, guys. Hard disagree, hard agree. Oh, Big Bang Theory oh, the is opening? one of my guilty pleasures, so I really can't <laughs> I can't disagree. Yeah, no, the opener, <laughs> the opener is a bop. <laughs> I love the opening, but it's attached to that show. Mm. Yeah, no, the opening's great. The opening's fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's a nice catchy ditty that only lasts like a minute. Not too long. <laughs> Perfect. It gets it the point written... of the show across, except it doesn't at all. Wasn't yeah. it written by the bare naked ladies? Whoa, what? <laughs> Hollywood is messed up, man. Right. <laughs> and scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that was Fraser, by the way. <laughs> not Seinfeld. I know. It was also, it also used to be the uh, intro music for Binging with Babish. Yeah. That I tried I tried the binging with Babish recipe. That's what caused me to burn and freeze milk at the same time. <laughs> what? 
A scrambled egg. <laughs> no, it was trying mac to make and cheese. The aforementioned scrambled eggs. It was mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah, not my proudest moment. The I. What is our episode about? <laughs> music. Music. And I am a music. What is music? Uh, sound waves. A series of tubes. <laughs> Oh, since you guys know what that, that means I have to wax philosophic about it. No! Oh. Don't you understand? Music is a feeling. Music is the unity that binds the human soul together. What sets us apart from the animals? It is love. Immaterial. I, okay, I've taken the intro to music class in college. Like, you don't gotta preach to me, professor. I understand. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. You guys remember that Lemon Demon song? The the one about two trucks having sex? How could I forget? It's <laughs> constantly what play it's like the elevator music in my head. <laughs> I know the song. I did not know the artist's name. Lemon Demon. It's yeah, the Lemon same Demon. dude that made Potter Puppet Pals. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to try my hardest to like delete that from my brain so that way the next time it's ever brought up, I'm gonna be like, who's that? And you guys are going to be like, we literally talked about it yesterday. We've had be like, this mm -mm. discussion. Mm -mm -mm. I'm simply living my truth, which is I have a poor memory. <laughs> so untrue, Worsty. No, it's, it's it's really true. It's very true, Bestie. Oh, sorry. sorry. It's so true, Bestie. Thank you, Bestie. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Music. Uh, but yeah, yeah, music. We're talking about music. Yeah, no, I mean, music's cool. We all have quite an illustrious history of music for our age. Indeed, we are three very musical people. Yeah, we've all been in uh, actual musical productions. We've all been mm -hmm. in choirs. We've all played instrument. Wait. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, as in I have. I know the piano. You have? Oh, yes, okay, okay, I know okay, I play okay, the piano. Okay. Crazy. He was just the one weirdo that wasn't in band. Yeah. If we were 30 years ago, I would beat mm. both of you up. Mm. <laughs> One weirdo not in band. <laughs> you were in choir. You can't you can't criticize. Oh I certainly can. <laughs> but anyways. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, we've uh, we've we've done we've done a bit of music. We have we have a mild understanding of the musical field, definitely not as much as some people. Dang it, we should have brought Taryn in. <laughs> nah. He's chilling. But I think we have enough that we can give we a enough. slightly a slightly more nuanced than average take. I, I ain't about... looking for nuance. <laughs> I just want to talk about what I like. <laughs> well, if we want to Dang talk it. about actual musical theory, we need to get Taryn in here because he's the person that taught himself how to play like 12 different instruments. No, uh he stays there playing bloons. <laughs> Is that what he's doing right I now? I know for a fact that's what he's doing, and he's in pretty deep, so we're not going to ruin him right now. He's 27 minutes in, man. All right. Go, Taryn. Yeah, he might make it past wave 40. because really he plays because he can't mode. hear you. <laughs> I'm aware. He can hear you, though, right? Yeah, he can hear me, yeah. <laughs> that's why he keeps putting stuff in there that's related to what we're talking about. But, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, music's cool. I was joking earlier. I know some people like to think music is some really cool thing, like really grand, super huge thing. I think it's neat. Mm -hmm. I definitely do think it's neat, but I don't, I never go so far as to get all like crazy about it. I think there's an intrinsic part of it that's, um, music is definitely special. I think mm -hmm. I, ju I just don't like to do the whole grand standiness about it because I just feel like that's cringe. I <laughs> Brewing. Uh, but I think it's a it's a uniquely human thing that like we made music and like all human societies everywhere made music because that's just like a thing that we do is we we like sound 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 good. It's an extension of a uh, human's propensity for storytelling. Yeah. It's true until you remember that some people specifically tried to make certain songs using farts. Okay, but I don't think that was <laughs> when we invented music though. <laughs> I just it doesn't matter when it was. It's just it's, it's where it's at. It permanently has stained music forever <laughs> by existing. Kinda. No more music. Like Hello. Jackson Pollock and art. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't even get me started. Uh, look what I did. I actually have zero opinions on art, like actually at all. And look what I've done. 
I do know Jackson Pollock was crazy, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, actually, I had a bit of a reminder the other day, or it's actually not been that long ago. It's been more than just one reminder, but you know, ever since like middle school, no, ever since I was a kid. Music's just been, like, a thing to me. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like my parents like to listen to it on the radio, though they are tone deaf. <laughs> um, and they try to sing, and it's wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I go to middle school, do a musical. I go to high school, do a choir and band. And even the people that weren't in those, I go to college, and I meet people that either make music or, are like, I just love these bands or this artist. I get out of college. I go get a job. And the first thing I get from people there is like four or five people that are like, no, I am not about music. <laughs> and it's it was weird to me. I was like, what That's do you wild. mean? I was like, everyone, you don't, you don't listen to music. You don't. And they're like, no. It's so weird. It felt alien. That's so odd. I feel like, how do you, because I, I feel like even though we're not talking about the, the philosophical, what is music? I feel like music is inherently a way of connecting to other people people how do you not do music like what is wrong with you (laughs) yeah no i i gotta agree uh i again like i was saying earlier how music's like a very human thing because obviously only humans can invent music only humans have made music it's something Mm -hmm. that naturally came about as part of our existence as a species so not partaking in it is odd well like why (laughs) why for why (laughs) These people are older than me, so it's not even like they're like, you know, kids that, you know, just haven't found a song they like. These people have had plenty of times to encounter music they like in other different mediums, and they're just they like, no. They live for good music. <laughs> nice. When tribe get together and sing around fire and make stomp rock noise, one grug always sit alone, far away from fire. <laughs> they say they no like stomp rock noise, but everyone have good time except for them. Very we true. think they just sad and lonely. Yeah, I feel like if, Very if, you're true. Gonna be, if you're gonna be that person with that take of, I don't really do music, you're doing it for attention. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still getting the lay of the land there, but I need to stop bad mouthing my coworkers. They're great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're not bad mouthing your coworkers. I'm bad. We are bad mouthing your coworkers. <laughs> I don't think that helps much, but uh, thanks for the attempt, guys. Thanks for the cover. Uh, this is strange to me, but to make it less alienating, if anyone's listening and they're like, oh, "I don't do music," um, I also what's wrong with you? I I don't get people that can't sing. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the whole thought. Discuss. I'm what like people that are tone deaf tone deaf or they can't get rhythm Mm. or both I understand but I definitely feel like it should be a much smaller proportion of the population than it is Mm -hmm. I feel like way too many people can't and I feel like it's a pretty easy skill that kind of lines up with basic human (laughs) <laughs> Again, it like music came about because it was something that was easy for us to do mm-hmm. and it was a way of expressing ourselves and it was so like it's it's simple. It's, it's a, a pattern. Communication. Humans do patterns. We do thing we make things, we build things, we create patterns, we create plans, we create formulas to understand things. So so having difficulty with it is like I get it might also be one of those things where just us coming from a perspective of people that we're not trained professionally by any means, but mm-hmm. we had a, like we mentioned earlier, we've all at least had we four have some years, training, if right? not more. <laughs> we've all had at least four years, if not more, of mm-hmm. actively singing for like six months at a time regularly every single day. Um, and just constantly like doing that work, putting in that work. And I think it's it's just more difficult for us as people that like regularly did that and it's kind of ingrained in our minds on how mm-hmm. it works and it, it's one of those things that we've done it so much that it's just like bread and butter back of the back of the hand we do it without thinking yeah it's hard for us to even conceptualize someone not being able to do that 
No, no, nah, man. I'm <laughs> not in the ivory tower. I'm in the picket line, and I don't know why <laughs> they don't know how to make a fence. <laughs> like, huh? I, my, neither of my parents know how to sing. They could not sing to me when I was young because it was grating, and they knew they couldn't sing. They still can't sing. They can't do it on pitch. They can't do it in rhythm. And and then I go to school and I'm like, oh, let me just listen to the song. Listen to the song. Replicates tune. Mm -hmm. It's even before I went to high school. It's like, oh, you hear that tune on the thing? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. My parents can't do that. My parents <laughs> cannot do what I just did. I'm Googling it. They can't do that, and or they can't do the uh uh any jingle. They can't do any jingle you can think of. Bum bum bum. They can't do them. They can't do them. And it's like, how not? You you hear, you make noise with mouth. <laughs> I don't get. I I was able to do it as a young kid. I'd hear like the radio, like like I'm gonna out I'm gonna out one of our local radio stations here. But like I'd be four years old and I'd go mix ninety nine point three. Yep. Yeah, I knew it. I just, it's boom. But Psychologist. Parents... Now, this is from BBC Science Focus magazine. Oh, so I don't have to listen to it. Okay. Psychologists have identified three factors that contribute to differences in people's rhythmic ability short term auditory memory, the ability to sense a regular timing structure and sounds, and musical training. That's rhythm. That is, that is rhythm. Yes, that's just rhythm. Um, rhythm, sure, I can kind of get. I struggled with rhythm until probably like my sophomore year when I was in chamber one. Mm. Okay, but let me look up why can some people not sing. <laughs> pitch. It's it's not being able to replicate a pitch. Like it's one thing if you look at the if like people can't read sheet music and yeah, I'm replicate still it. Garbage at sight reading. I can't do that. No, mm -hmm. uh, I tried to. That's why I learned piano. But uh, controlling pitch of sound and the main reason why some people appear to be poor singers comes down to lack of right motor control. So it's just it's a muscle that's not trained. You can think of music production as and singing in particular as a physical skill. That's what the Guardian says. Which I mean that makes that's sense. That's not a I, scientific source. No, <laughs> science but if you think science about it, ABC it says um oh that's Beyonce. Wait one second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it makes sense though because your voice is a, a muscle, and so like. Well, well, for example, like I can't sing the same high notes that I could in high school because I haven't sung them in years. If I practiced at it again and worked up to it, I probably could. But like right now off the bat, I cannot hit the same C6 that I was able to pop off with at any time when I was in high school. But I think but I think what Pertus it's getting at is just like people just not being able to have pitch at all. Like, yeah, that I have nothing. The it's idea of not being able to like put a sound to a particular sound. It's, yeah, yeah, matching like, it mm -hmm. yeah the inability to match not like what they can do like it is probably a muscle i'd probably have to look at like some actual peer-reviewed stuff to figure it out but also well that's why people... we warm up like because it's mm. you can hurt yourself if you don't warm up properly before singing because you can strain your voice and it causes but yeah things. yeah but like if I told my parents hey parents do this right now hmm, and I just keep kept doing it until they did it they mm -hmm. literally could not match me. <laughs> not not by trying, anyway. They would just mm -hmm. like go up and down the scales until they found it, and even then they wouldn't know they found it. Mm -hmm. And and there's other people. I keep using my parents, my poor parents. They know. <laughs> they, they know. They know. <laughs> They're aware. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's other people out there, too. There may be people listening to this or something, but, like, if there's... Okay, I'm not coming from a place of anger, I swear, bestie. If you're one of these people that you can't do it, please explain to me as best you can. Talk to me like I'm a second grader and you like me and I'm not an annoying child. Talk to me and try to explain why you can't. Like, like try to break it down because I want to know. It feels like that's a big deal. <laughs> I don't know. It is thoroughly most confusing. Of, most of the answers I'm getting on the internet are people being like, musical training play is a big part in it. Because it just gives you like the base, it basically having a foundation of notes mm -hmm. is just like the biggest step in the entire thing. So it's people, say. people that don't do something like that, they just don't have the foundation to work off of. Well, sure. I'm sure that's, you know, 50% uh, uh, of voters are above the age of 18 at least, <laughs> right? Like it's pretty easy to say people that have the skill can do it. But, like, why can't the people 
Why can't people do it? Why, what about the people that can't? Why can't they? And there's going to be people that try and try and they won't get it. There's going to be people that never try and can sing better than the most seasoned musician. I want to figure out what's about it. But I'm always like that, right? Like, <laughs> Also, music, cool as it is, isn't really curing cancer as far as we know right now. So there's not a whole lot of research, at least when I was Hey, there's an anime that. that does that. <laughs> it does not cure it. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> sorry, that was really funny. No, I'm not sorry. That was really funny. <laughs> oh, enough about us alienating our audience and being insanely mean about uh our, our privilege of being able to sing. Yeah, um, us. <laughs> Yeah, I I love taking you all down with me into the mud. Uh, <laughs> I'm a pro at it. Um, let's go to a light, a more lighthearted topic. Let's just talk mm -hmm. about. Let's start with what's your favorite genre of music? Start there. Oh, well, that's a really hard question. I'll go first. Okay. Um, and I'm, uh, well, maybe not because I don't think our audience really includes anyone from this <laughs> group, but I was going to say, oh, I might get flamed for this, uh, but probably power metal. Oh, okay. Um, but in, in the metal world, power metal is considered like the normie bad doo-doo metal that metal people don't like. So Imagine just... gatekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. yeah. Imagine bringing someone down. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I couldn't possibly. Oh uh, no! I... Unironically, though, I don't know which one's the worst about it, but it does feel like either metal or rock or probably metal. Well, I've heard that some metal people are the most welcoming and greatest fan base. I've also heard that like. Metal people are so, so particular mm. about what's real metal and stuff like that. And they will gatekeep so hard. Yeah, no, I'm I'm of the second opinion. Metal metal fan. Well, okay, it depends because like generalists, like like I would say power metal fans, power metal fans generally don't care. Uh because pow power metal is stuff like like Sabaton. Or like Power Wolf, if you know any of those. That Power Metal's whole thing is it's supposed to like be grand and bombastic and sound like, like they put an orchestra behind the music and like it's supposed to sound like a great big thing. Yeah, Dragon Force is a uh, power metal. Mm. Um, and metal people are like, well, uh, the like metal isn't supposed to like be inspiring. It's supposed to be like like that's like anyone who doesn't like power metal, they are extremely pretentious metal fans. They are extremely pretentious because the reason they don't like power metal is because they're like, yeah, metal isn't supposed to make you feel like cool. Like, I wonder if it doesn't wrap around. It's like horseshoe theory. Like, the uh, the power metal fans don't care. And then you have the pretentious people, and then you have the people that are super into really niche metal, and they don't care about the difference. Probably. <laughs> I feel like it wraps back around. It's that it's that what that one meme of the bell curve where it's like the people on one yeah. end that are the <laughs> power metal fans. Just uh, listen to any metal you want. The people in the middle. No, power metal sucks. The people all the way at the end. Just I don't care if you listen, listen to, power to whatever metal. you want. Yeah. <laughs> I can never not read it in that like dramatic voice. <laughs> yeah, Jordan. Uh, mine's gonna be a long answer. Is mine is every time that I am asked to pick anything that is my favorite because there are too many fucking options. <laughs> uh, right now, I've been listening to a lot of like indie rock and folk punk, and mm. that's basically been the majority of my playlist right now. But I always do love like eighties rock and stuff like that because that's what a lot of my parents listen to and that kind of stuff and like classic rock 80s rock also show tunes <laughs> dad rock yacht rock power uh, power metal 80s rock is probably my second favorite i love 80s dad rock. rock i love 80s rock it makes me laugh because that's what my dad listens to <laughs> well uh your dad has good taste <laughs> indeed mm. <laughs> don't let him hear you say that um that wasn't a super long answer. That was like, what, 
Eight letters, nine letters. It's only it's one of the shorter ones I've given. I was expecting like a really long word when you said long answer. Uh, disestablishmentarianism. <gasps> yeah, but for music, I was expecting like some like some term of music that's got eight different they're like defining. What do you call those prefixes? I get. I'm telling you, we got to get Taryn in here. <laughs> Electro synchro neo paleo like. <laughs> Uh, full anti-disestablishmentarianism anti yeah don't don't say it like you need to remember it don't don't say it again like <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> oh pertuz it what is your favorite kind of music? Don't, well i mean if you're gonna ask <laughs> um it never gets old because it never was good uh it gets, <laughs> it's like curdled milk it can't get worse oh, god <laughs> I mean, you guys know more or less. Well, maybe not. We don't talk about music a whole lot, honestly, despite our upbringing. <laughs> um, I just listen to whatever I think sounds good, irreverent of genre most of the time. I've gone through phases of what I like genre-wise the most. Like, there'll be a good year or two where I'm like, OMG, don't even talk to me if it's not, if it doesn't sound like it's, like destroying my ears <laughs> like <laughs> me with and then, sea shanties <laughs> and then like a year will pass and i'll be like what was i on <laughs> i don't know i think recently it's gonna sound cring but like i love i don't know if it's actually called classical but i just or orchestral i love orchestral music mm -hmm. a lot orchestral music is it I mean, there's a reason that it was the thing for, like, 300 years. <laughs> it sounds really cool when you got, like, a bunch of instruments going wacko mode mm -hmm. all together. to Beethoven's new symphony that he just dropped. <laughs> True. Yo, Beethoven's new album is fire! Can you imagine? Um, otherwise, I also kind of like jazz, ironically. You like I jazz? I do. I do like jazz. I don't like hard jazz. I don't like typical jazz. I like things that have a jazzy feel. It's probably mm -hmm. not actually called jazz. It's probably some stupid term. I also hate, I hate, 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 hate how much music has different like subgenres within subgenres where there's yeah. an iota of a difference. That's like, why it's really um, hard to pin down like what my favorite genre is because I'm like, I don't actually know what it's called. With exactly. cells interlinked. Exactly. <laughs> I like... I like orchestral music. That I can say with confidence because it's just music of an like from an orchestra. But which era of orchestral music? No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh huh. That's right. I didn't. That's why I didn't say classical. <laughs> uh, um. But the jazz. When I say I like jazz music, I don't necessarily mean jazz exclusively. I mean like Persona Five sound or Persona mm -hmm. soundtrack sound. Yeah. That yeah. is not jazz, as some people, especially a common friend of ours, would say. <laughs> but I think that is jazzy. I don't know yeah. what music you'd say it is specifically, but I think you would say it's got a swing feel to it is what you would say mm -hmm. about yeah. the music. I bet if I tried to figure out what it was called, it would probably be called something like jazz pop. Mm. I bet. I freaking bet. J-pop! <laughs> I ain't gonna look it up. Electro swing. That was one that I was into for a while. It's a really weird... <laughs> I don't like the name of it. <laughs> I was gonna say I actually physically cringed when you said it. I yeah, uh, no, I hate the name of it. <laughs> um funk soul and rock oriented with jazz elements is what there you uh, go. J Music Ensemble on Twitter uh, says about persona. People should not be allowed music. to speak about music. I guess but they continue this whole They continued to say, <laughs> but you know, genres suck. And we should just be listening to the music. I just, I mean, yes. <laughs> oh, on Reddit, they're calling Persona 5 acid jazz. No. Shin Megami Tensei 4 is cyberpunk electronic. Okay, now listen. Technically, every one of the different Persona thingies all have different themes. So for sure, I get that. I would never say Persona 5 sounds like Persona 4 OST. Mm -hmm. 
Taryn can back me up on that. Say what I just said so that way he can hear you and type something in Discord. Uh, but uh, Pertusa is saying that uh, all the personas have a different type of music uh, genre and that he would never say that they all sound the same. He never said, he would never say that four sounds like five. And he told me to tell you this so that you could type something in Discord. I really wish he would have said Pertusa said that all of the persona games sound the exact same. That would have been good. <laughs> Dang it. I, <laughs> I see he's typing. <laughs> um he's here on the episode honorarily <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's in the void for context i think i'll finally give context this entire time we've been recording i've been sitting in our recording room and also in a discord call that taryn's in <laughs> so taryn has just been hearing just me in the podcast <laughs> right now part relating all of my audio to him so he's been typing things in our discord <laughs> four does not yeah. sound like five in the slightest within cells interlinked yeah, don't le- don't read that part. Don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> One third ever. of a conversation is very funny. Uh, Persona Four has like a crazy country sound to it, way different than Five. Yet at the same time, despite them being very different, they do seem to have like a motif almost. Not like an actual motif. Like you don't hear the same like little you know chord each in each game, but. When you listen to them, you're like, that's Persona. They're going to sound way different, but you're like, that's Persona. Mm-hmm. Which is really cool. I don't know how they do it. I don't know the music theory behind it, but it's freaking sweet. That aside, now that we've gotten the big question out of the way, let's go to the small question and see if it contradicts your big question. What's your favorite song, Levi? Oh, gosh. I don't know if I can pick one favorite now, now, song. Now, 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 right now, right now, right now. I don't... I, uh, what <laughs> see, I this listen- one I actually do have a definitive answer Levi, for. Levi, go, go, Levi. What have I been listening to the most go, recently go, 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 go. is no, I no, have favorite, been... No, no, no I don't have all time. one favorite all time, song. All time, favorite song. Favorite song of all time. This is the one that you're going to like until you die. Yep. You nope. can't say there's one better. I, I don't. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> we broke him. I refuse. <laughs> All right, what have you been listening to recently? The most recent song I listened to was Darkness at the Heart of My Love by Ghost. I don't know who that is. Jordan, you know who that is? No, I know who Ghost is, but I don't know the song. It's, okay. um, they, they, they're kind of just like a rock group. <laughs> okay. Pretty much. And yeah, it's, it's kind of just like a rock song, yeah. Okay. It's pretty good, though. I like it. That's your favorite of all time for now. That's your favorite of all time forever. Locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I got untrue, him. Untrue, actually. I got him. He's so done for. Untrue, worst day. Jordan, what about you? Uh oh. I uh, saw what he put in there. My favorite song of all ah. time, and this answer does not change, is Come On Eileen by Dexy's Midnight Runners. Oh, man, that, that fits song. yours. What? Yeah, no, that makes sense. That fits <laughs> yours. I do really like the song of Yara and Dill. Uh, I love Bloodborne. That's not that's not power metal or rock at all. That's literally a uh poem put to music. So, <laughs> hmm. yeah, it's Tolkien. It's a Tolkien poem. Mm. Ah, I got you. Got gotcha. you. Yep. <laughs> I, I will say my favorite does not necessarily fit with what I've been listening to lately, which is kind of funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Pertusa, what's your favorite song of all time? Ah, uh-huh. I'm not gonna do the bit again. But <laughs> so, I mean, of course, it's difficult to think of one. There's a lot that I like for different reasons and different times. And is my favorite one the li- one I listen to all the time? No, but it is one that I always find myself returning to listen to. And my answer actually isn't either of the genres I listed. Ah, <gasps> it is Claire de Lune by Debussy. That's your That's least favorite one. now. That's your That's least favorite of all time. You no, no, no. <laughs> For the uncultured among you that may possibly do this, no, it is not orchestral. It is literally just one piano. Um, and it's on the Twilight soundtrack. And Why also, you if you don't know what Claire de Lune is, I don't want to sound like one of the pretentious <laughs> music people, but culture yourself. I no, yeah, just basic. go watch Twilight. It's a major plot point. Just look it up on YouTube. Just go watch Twilight. It's like how long? I now I've tolerated your movie nonsense for a while, <laughs> Jordan. But what's this Twilight posting? 
It's uh, five minutes long. Okay, the first Twilight movie is a piece of comedic genius, and it's the funniest shit in the entire world, and you cannot convince me otherwise. And it's watch by it alone. Debussy. Watch it alone. <laughs> it's not funny when you watch it alone. It's... Oh, yeah, it is. Uh-uh. Yeah. Mm -mm. I watched it with my mom, which is basically like watching it alone. <laughs> it was awful. I also don't I think you're it. necessarily the target audience so for the Twilight movies. Listen, with your mom, <laughs> I target the target audience isn't gonna think they're funny. The target audience is gonna swoon. I know because they're fucking hilarious. A wooga, Dude, I, wooga. Can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I pop out of sockets. <laughs> no, it, the Claire de Lune is a very good choice, though. I, <laughs> I beyond Claire the Twilight posting, <laughs> <laughs> it calms me. But it also is a song that invokes great sadness, yet at the same time, closure. Aww. I love Claire de Lune. Hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of other good runners, too. Um, what's that one? Another another close runner up for me would have to be uh, Fortunate Son by CCR. Something about it goes it goes hard. It, it do go hard. It's one of those songs that's like, even though it's meme to hell, it's just like something about Fortunate Son. It just hits right. It just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some folks do be born silver spoon in hand. <laughs> <laughs> now, go to another one because I don't want to hold on favorite for too long. What? This, is, this one just occurred to me. Do you guys have like... Not necessarily what we're going to get to later, but do you guys have, like, a playlist you listen to in your downtime or whenever you want to or whatever? Yes. No. That is a, that is a loaded question. Because <laughs> I was wondering, I have something in mind, mm -hmm. as we're young adults and we did not always have music we listened to, like, we chose to listen to. Mm hmm I was thinking, what was the first song you added on your playlist or or what was the first song that you, like, chose to listen to it and, and listened to continuing afterwards, not like chose and then hated. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't see, I don't have a playlist personally. I just have songs that I like. And what I do is I just go on YouTube and press autoplay. Uh, I have a lot of playlists. <laughs> and it yeah. just goes through like several different genres in the span of five videos. Uh, because for instance, uh, if I go to my mix on YouTube right now, uh, the first one is uh, I Feel It Coming by The Weeknd. Um, but then uh, we've got uh, Yona Yona Dance uh, and Old Time Rock and Roll. My goodness. Well, look at that. We're, we're, we're uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears again. Because <laughs> I have a single playlist that I've had for at least seven years and has been growing ever since. See, I have one of those, but I don't listen to it exclusively. Like, I have a mega playlist, but then I have more hyper specific playlists that I also listen to. Yeah, see, we're the we're the we're the three <laughs> bears because you have a bunch of playlists. Levi has no playlist, and then I have one playlist. Like a normal person. <laughs> Which one's the normal? I had no clue. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> none of the above. Uh, honestly, I mean, I feel like everyone approaches the music they listen to differently. Mm. We're, we're proof. We're <laughs> See, Taryn thinks I'm weird because I don't like to listen to albums as much as I will pick. I will like have a playlist of either one artist or similar vibe music and I'll play it on shuffle. I usually I there are certain albums that I do like to listen to all the way through, but most of the time my music is on shuffle. I was talking to people at work about this today, actually. Hmm. Um, I despise albums. Mm. I don't like them. Uh, really? They're a product of an ancient time, frankly. <laughs> um, at least for myself, personally speaking, mm -hmm. I listen to one song by an artist, and then if the next song is by that same artist, I'm going to get upset. <laughs> I'm going to actually have a worse experience listening to it. So albums are the bane of my existence. First off, I did not know that. What on earth? For the listening pleasure is the purpose of an album compared to just listening to a collection of individual songs. 
I see. I like concept albums where there's a through line. Like I listen sure. to Pink Floyd's The Wall a lot. Um, if there's a story, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like like ones that have a story. Also, like Clockwork Angels by Rush has kind. It's it's not exactly a concept album, but it kind of is. Every Rush album is kind of a concept album. Yeah, this is um, why Mamma Mia is a masterpiece. But like, <laughs> what? <laughs> But that's because of something independent of the music. Mm -hmm. So in what world are albums a superior way to digest music? If not for just like you have a parasocial relationship with the artist. Uh, Pre-90s. <laughs> so, so we're exactly. like a Beatles that... beat where it's like just a bunch of stuff on a record. Uh-huh. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty sure that's how almost every other album, at least today, is except for by, you know, specific weirdo artists that are trying to make something transcendiary mm. than you know just music oh like evelyn evelyn oh look she's got them all she's got them all folks see <laughs> that's it's another concept album <laughs> mm -hmm. um but like ariana grande you think she makes through line albums oh absolutely not beyonce no i will raise you taylor swift though don't <laughs> don't make me do it Who's that's, that on the that's phone? That's one of the songs. Look what you made me do. Sorry. <laughs> Old Pertus, it can't come to the phone right now. Why? <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I know there's a lot of people that like Taylor Swift. She put those lines in an album, in a song, in an album that got very popular. Ever sure. since then, anyone that likes her, I can't take you seriously. I'm not going to say you're bad. I just can't take you seriously. I'll say it. It's it's <laughs> like it's like when a kid tells me that like their favorite food is like gummies, right? Like, mm -hmm. sure, bud. You know, <laughs> yeah, you definitely have a reason to be scared for your life because someone has been stalking you. Uh huh. <laughs> you, but you like Taylor Swift, right? So like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm gonna defend my name for just a minute. I am not a Swifty. I have a passing awareness because my roommates really like Taylor Swift. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm just like. Honestly, I like I like a lot of Swift song. What you know about I like Candace? some of her stuff, yeah. No, um, <laughs> but when she when she hit those when she did those lines, I was like, I'm <laughs> I can't anymore. It's not real. It's not. This is the worst thing ever. Can you imagine if anyone else, like not necessarily an artist, but like if someone had posted that on like Facebook <laughs> that just went to school, they would be bullied immensely. <laughs> you can't just do that, man. This this is like the Wednesday Adams problem. Take them out of the show they're in. They are getting bullied to heck. They are not okay. Oh, that's an Same MCR song. <laughs> oh gosh, I've never heard of MCR before. Who's that? No. This is what happens when your friends are nerds. They they like this and they like the one about giants or something like that. They might be giants. I don't know. I don't know the name of the band. Um. Oh, come on. That was funny. Mm. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> Man. What? <laughs> it's funnier to me that you're, just, that you're sad. <laughs> that was sad. We got very off topic. So, first song. I still could not tell you. I... <laughs> really? Uh, 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 I have so many extensive playlists and everything. I, I think, okay, the, the I will say the first, I don't have the first song, but the first, like, band as a whole that I listened to that was not necessarily a product of like the people around me was Steam Powered Giraffe. I still love Steam Powered Giraffe to this day. Virtual and Insanity Gura AI cover. <laughs> Did you just lie to me, Levi? <laughs> what? No. I feel like you just lied to me, Levi. No, I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't lie to me right now? I wouldn't lie to you. I wouldn't do that. What's on your what's on your computer screen right now? Not that. Show your screen. No, not it's not. The, just show, show your screen. Not, just share your screen real quick. No, it's not that screen. video. Just share your screen. It's, it's not that video. If you have nothing to hide, just share your screen. It's just it's not that though. It's not that video. <clears throat> Taryn, get him. <laughs> <laughs> I have a for sure answer because I have my my singular master playlist. So I mm -hmm. I remember individually putting in every. You song. know what song? <laughs> mm-hmm. The playlist, by the way, seven years growing, is at about 250 songs or a little less. Um, you might be thinking like, oh, that's not that much at all. But like, 
I only add like five songs every season. And by season, I mean like spring, winter, summer. So like, and that's like several hours worth of music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my but very first song, yeah, the very first song I ever sought out is a really weird one. It was, I was going through my emo boy phase. Not actually emo, but just like sad boy. No. I was just like doing sad boy stuff. The emo boy song. No, I had found out what a visual novel was. Even worse. And I would, I, I'm. I, this is like sophomore year of high school. I would go do homework, you know, do club activity stuff, go home spend like five hours playing visual novels like just reading visual novels and making the decisions and stuff and i found one called the fruit of grisaia or grisaia whatever um and i got a path in the end of that one and it had a song at the end of it and i cried so hard at the ending of that thing i was like i need to listen to this song like at least once a day <laughs> To remind myself that I feel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dude, visual novels tore me up, man. You want to have uh, forced emotional growth, play visual novels. But, <laughs> mm. so there is a song at the end of Fruit of Grisaia, the first one, um, in which it is called Skip and is the Michiru ending. I don't actually know who sang it because it was like impossible to find. Because even the only place I could find it, I could not find it by just like searching up this ending song or whatever. The only way I could find it was literally watching the credits of the game again. Mm. That's how niche of a song this was. <laughs> and not only doing that, but having to decipher the Japanese to... to I couldn't copy and paste because it was credits in a game. So I had to just like figure it out. <laughs> and that was the first one. Which is really funny because I listen to it every now and again, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is such a classic, and then I'm like, but it's not really that good, like. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's a memory associated with it. Precisely. With that in mind, Jordan, I believe you have a topic you want to broach. <gasps> oh, is it finally? Is it finally time? Speaking of playlists, okay, <laughs> this is one of my favorite things to talk about because it's it's a big thing on the internet that I've seen other people do, and I love hearing about what other people have on theirs. Character playlists for D and D. I love talking about this because I have so many. I have different playlists for the same character for like different parts. I character songs. Does anybody else have songs that they associate with specific D and D characters? No, it God is only it. you. I mean, sometimes <laughs> when I'm listening to songs, I think like, oh, that makes sense for this character, but like, I don't, uh, I don't just like tack them on to people before even thinking about it i have to like be actively associating the song i have to be actively listening to a song to associate it mm. it's so hard <laughs> you know like you know <laughs> there was that time back when we were playing vivia 2 when like everyone was obsessed with everyone having a theme song mm -hmm. and i say like that time like it was like an extended amount it was like two days um <laughs> but i remember after we talked about it that night, spending hours trying to find the perfect song for my character. And my problem was I, for the character I was playing, I was like, my, my song would never have lyrics in it. Mm -hmm. So then I've spent forever trying to find a song that I liked that was completely instrumental, but still carried the vibe I wanted. I didn't want orchestral. My character was not an orchestral type. So here I was trying to find like almost OST music for this character and i was like this is i just don't i can't it doesn't fit i, I feel like i'm trying to force the horseshoe on you know what mm -hmm. i mean it was too difficult because i was like nothing quite sums up my character the way i was could i have picked like Freebird, probably but i didn't because i was too picky <laughs> that was my that was my character man I, I didn't want to boil them into a into a certain thing mm -hmm. i couldn't could I try it again now? Probably. Does it sound fun? Yes. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> Am I going to do it? No. <laughs> yeah. I like the concept didn't really though. Uh, I like, um, I liked when you provided me with Arlo's uh, main song. 
That's one of my, I, I love Arlo's playlist just all the way through, but I also do love that song. That was very fun I got to do with that. And it even got used in a fight. Exactly. Aww. That's one thing I can relate to. The music yeah. that we had during the Methus fight is Arlo's theme song. Oh. Or it was, just, or it was uh, Arlo's theme song at one point. Yeah, it was that, but without lyrics. Mm -hmm. Which I really oh. liked. I did not know there was an instrumental version of that. It was pretty hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> I had to find, like, the karaoke version. Mm -hmm. There's a karaoke... Oh, I hate that there's a karaoke track for that song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but... No, it's a bop. I love Arlo's playlist, though. Like, I that one I worked really, really hard on. It was quite fun. And I like to receive it as the DM. And I was like, oh... Like, it was like... Instead of me trying to put it onto a character, now it was something came part and parcel with the character. And I was like, oh, I can use it. Because mm -hmm. I work within systems. I'm not good at, at, at making a system. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that note, I, I do want to add, though, that I have an interesting... I want, I want to bring up something about music and D&D &D as it's concerned. Because, mm -hmm. like, for music for D&D, &D, for fights and, and otherwise mood setting... I think, I like the idea, ironically, compared to the character for D&D, &D, for being a DM, I prefer the idea of music that conveys a mood more than it does accuracy to the environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you probably have noticed as players, <laughs> especially with my fight music choice, I will choose some crazy electro, you know, boss fight OST mm -hmm. music that, like, if it was, like, like compared to some of the stuff in Critical Role, they always take stuff from, like, Witcher, Skyrim, yeah. stuff that sounds like it's using instruments of the time or of mm -hmm. the area. And it's like, does it feel atmospheric? Yes. Does it feel like it's conveying the mood? Yes. But I was like, I'm going full mood. Screw <laughs> atmosphere. I want y'all to be, like, jumping up in your seats cause, with the beat because it's mm -hmm. so crazy. So that was my main choice in choosing that music that I chose. And I'd be interested to hear, uh, first off, your all's opinions, but also thoughts from the comment section. Indeed. It, it usually does convey a certain vibe. Like, I think it sets the tone for the fight. Mm -hmm. Levi? I mean, I think for me... He's still watching Virtual Insanity. No. <laughs> I'm just trying to process my own answer here because I don't really. I agree with both sides of the of the spectrum here, but I think that. I mean, that that's that just seems like a really generic answer though is the answer that I have prepared, which is like it just depends. Like, <laughs> it just depends on the situation that you're in because, like, sometimes in my opinion, although I guess. Also, your players don't really know that. But what I was going to say is, like, as a DM, sometimes there are combats that I know are just, like, one-offs. This doesn't mean anything. It's just to give them a combat and throw something at them. It doesn't have anything to do with the story at all. So I'm like, okay, generic music. There you go. But then, obviously, combats that actually have more significance to the story or something of that nature then then yeah you're going to want to go you're going to want to shoot for music that would be more thematically appropriate in that instance rather than just generic witcher soundtrack 17 uh to throw on top of it um i know when i was doing vivia 2 i didn't really that was part of the thing is like i didn't really have like music and vision for any of the antagonists mm. i mean I didn't think about that beforehand. And so there wasn't like a particular vibe that any of them were specifically, I was trying to set with any of them mm -hmm. when, when you were put into a room with them and looking back on it, I'm honestly not sure what I would have chosen for. I don't know what you even want to regard. Obviously there's the main antagonist, but there, there were a couple different groups in Vivia three that you fought. My or, Vivia is... three, Vivia two, excuse me. Um, we haven't gotten to Vivia 3 yet. Why? That what? I I just think that would have been best. Okay. 
We can do that in three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only when, patriotic songs. It'll be when you fight the the uh, the Genshin characters. Yeah, their country tis of mine. Their country is my <laughs> allegory for America. Uh, everyone wants to be my enemy. Amazing. And yes, for you listeners at home, shut up, Taryn. For you listeners at home, <laughs> I um I have inserted Genshin Impact characters into my D and D world. No, don't um, shut up, Taryn. He's right and he should say it. No, he's wrong and he shouldn't say it. What are you Louisiana. talking about? You know nothing. This is my world that exists in my mind palace. Louisiana. What is wrong with you? Don't bring this to the viewers. Do not. <laughs> I am the one. I can't believe I'm saddled with this information. I am. Louisiana. Quit it. <laughs> uh, Taryn's not physically here, so. <laughs> but all three of you, I'll drag all three of your ears for this. Ah. <laughs> huh. But yeah, no, that's uh, that's me. That's fair. But I, in particular, I mean, all the music that I have saved for specific bosses, and that uh, partly is that because I had so much time before my campaign truly began in earnest to the point of final bosses. I have a whole playlist of music for just rando fights, mm. but it's none of it is, you know, using old medieval style music. Mm. Or even Bronze Age style music like uh, like Hades. Now, I do have some Hades, but like Hades, even still, it uses the freaking theremin, which they did not have in ancient Greece. <laughs> Are you so? Sure about that? <laughs> yeah, ask Taryn. Ask Taryn real quick. Hey, Taryn, did they have the theremin in ancient Greece? Yeah, we're waiting, audience. We're waiting. <laughs> we are waiting for you to answer before we continue the episode. So you better gonna, be quick. He's going to say something like, probably. Watch. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> what if you like no, yeah, copy no. paste a fucking wikipedia page into the goddamn discord <laughs> no he wouldn't taryn would never search that up he just knows he stopped I, he's doing that now because it's i said it yeah, it's because you're saying it, it. taryn yeah. if you do it i ban you okay oh, yeah. 1920s okay. okay thanks taryn the correct <laughs> answer um i don't know why we did that <laughs> I don't know. You did it! My brother in Christ, you made the sandwich! So I... <laughs> untrue, worsty. I, but... <laughs> I will say on the topic of Olympus music, though, I feel like not using, like, like using less conventionally diegetic music kind of makes sense with the way that Olympus goes anyway, because it's so, like, I, I don't want to say subversive, that's not the word that I'm looking for, but it's so different from, like, a typical Greek myth story while still being a Greek myth story that I think mm. it fits that we don't have like heart music in the background. It makes sense that we have like techno jazz playing in the background yeah. while we're fighting stuff because it's like it, it fits with the vibe of Olympus. Yeah, that's what I shoot for. I shoot for <laughs> vibes specifically. Mm -hmm. So I do have general playlists or like of music that I'm like, oh well, they're fighting. It, it'll it, especially since I do all the all the stuff. I'll even be like, this is a fight I planned mostly mm -hmm. most of the time. <laughs> but I'll be like, but it's not a major enemy. Therefore, generic music playlist go. Um, same for other group. They get the same playlist. <laughs> but I'm so offended we don't get our own playlist. Bro, there's like 60 songs on there. <laughs> you can share. You can... <laughs> but that's my take. And I'd be interested to know from people in the comments if like if you if you played with something like that, would that be a deal breaker? Perhaps even a deal maker? What are your thoughts on that? I also I'm... think for us specifically, that's just something that as we've uh, evolved as a group, we've kind of uh, grabbed that as we've gone, which obviously music is, I mean, as we have explained, it's, uh, bloggers. It, it's part of what makes us human, I think. But so mm -hmm. most people, I would say, probably have music at their table when they're playing um, but yeah, like generally back when I was the main DM for that first, what, two years that we played, I didn't mm. really do a lot of background music. And I think it's just because it wasn't something I really just thought about that much at the time. Um, and obviously now that I have the foresight in Vivia 3, you'll probably get a lot more of that. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think it's just something that, um, has evolved as we've played. Well, I will point out one example. There was one spot in Vivia 2 that you use background music, Levi, that like is burned into my memory because it was so cool. It was whenever we attended the coronation. 
It oh like yeah that, when you had the background music for that whole thing that was the coolest thing in the entire world i played yeah zadok the priest which is mm -hmm. actually the british coronation theme in real life you, but it but it fits so well in the way that you had timed it it was just so cool and so impact i don't know if anybody else remembers that as much as i do but like i still think about that sometimes it was cool Oh, yeah, that was, that was one that I actually wanted to do. That was one of the few times that I was like, oh, I should do a cool thing with music here, because it's a coronation. <laughs> I just keep hearing in my head that one Warhammer 40k song that goes, <laughs> I don't even know if we actually ever even used it in Vivia 2 or just so much as we used it at your house every now and again. <laughs> it... <laughs> <laughs> but it, man, it's, I, I hear that. Mr. Wah -wah in my L. Sleep. Mr. Uh, L was the person who played that the first time, and I think it was one of those times where, like, he played it and it just left it hours. on, I, and I was none of us stopped it. Tequila for thirteen hours. Yeah, that is um, no sphere, I believe. The bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the guy. That's the that's the that's the ticket. There was <laughs> that, and then there was "Bad Out of Hell" by Meatloaf. Yep. And then there was tequila, all on separate occasions that played for upwards of several hours. Now, conversely, another thing that I'll never forget that wasn't necessarily music was the uh, burning forest uh, ambience. I'll never forget mm. that one for a different reason. Oh, no, it's uh, Children of the Omnissiah. That's what That's it is. right. I thought Omnissiah was in the name. Yeah. Um, I'm currently listening to it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah so that's my my design philosophy as a dm i would encourage you if you're another dm give it a try see what happens pick music based on vibe don't pigeonhole yourself into but it's got to be accurate who knows you might find something that really shocks the table and brings people into attention if you have a problem with that no, or do the hard opposite good. and be extremely like it has to be thematically great <laughs> it has to be accurate to the the scene <laughs> good that will add to the um... and then just hire a miniature orchestra that sits by your table like eight people mm -hmm. and... no don't get an orchestra get a mariachi band i ain't doing that in my greek campaign <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun surprise for your players hire a mariachi band for one session and just see what happens and then Zeus turns to you all with his <laughs> lightning bolt in hand to fight you. We're done. We're done. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the episode you just listened to. If you really like our content, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on YouTube, and look for us on Spotify. If you'd like to see us continuing to do more fun projects in the future, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find our page linked in the description above all of our other social media links. And finally, if you'd like to keep up with the zany shenanigans of our lives and check out some more skit-based content and things like that, check us out on Twitter and TikTok. Links in the description. And hey, thanks!